Hello, my friends, evolutionary. Oh, this is EE Arts, isn't it? Well, yeah, but we're all one. Sorry, I'm glad we're all one. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. So I, I threw her for a loop there. I just stuck the microphone in front of her face. And she gets the big smile on. So feelings buried alive never die. And this is something that I've heard Cindy talk about so many times with um, so many people that have reached out to us to uh, for energy work and for emotional support. And it's very, very true. They, they don't. And so many people right now are going through crises and dark nights of the soul because as we are changing because of all the cosmic rays coming in, it, it's making so many of us more empathetic, um, more intuitive, more psychic. And if we're not able to process our emotions, it's going to cause dis-ease. And the last client, the last person that we were helping uh, today it really it hit me that, wow, we really got to just talk about some of these basic concepts because so many people are brought up in the Western allopathic mindset. And that whole mindset really, it, it just kind of reduces things down into uh, the, the smallest component without looking at the whole. In so many ways, it's not a holistic system. There are great changes underway. And there's many amazing practitioners like our own Doc Rock, Dr. Rene, uh, who is very, very aware and, and uh, integrating other alternative practices into her practice, as well as our uh, Dr. Joe, uh, who is a, a dear friend of ours as well, and, and also uh, besides you know being a doctor, he's a Reiki master as well. And so he understands that emotions are so powerful. When we look at the seven deadly sins, because most of us are brought up in a Judeo-Christian tradition. So, you know, things from the East might be a little foreign, but you might understand things from the biblical tradition. So the seven deadly sins are vanity, pride, sloth, gluttony, lust, avarice, envy and jealousy, wrath and anger. Well, many people might just say, well, these are things God don't, doesn't want us to experience, doesn't want us to cultivate. It's more than that. It is, obviously, it's not going to be benef beneficial for humanity if we are all uh, actively cultivating these seven deadly sins. But why are they deadly? Well, because there is an emotional component to each of them that as we experience that, it affects our organ systems. And in traditional Chinese medicine, it's understood very, very well. And you have seven emotions in Chinese medicine. And the seven emotions are joy, anger, grief, worry, and pensiveness, fear, and fright. And of course, one of the things that's strived for in the Eastern tradition is balance. It's about balance. It's about harmony. And we are going to experience a roller coaster ride of emotions. But the more we can get ourselves back into a calm, centered place, or a place of love and joy and peace and uh, contentment, the more our body will be able to respond in a beneficial way. Uh, as well, we have talked many, many times about the fact that uh, basically we, we have a nervous system that is either in fight or flight mode or in rest and digest. It's just an on off switch. So it, there is like no middle ground. You're in one or the other. The more you're in fight or flight, the more you're basically going to produce cortisol, which is a stress hormone, which has its, it has its benefits. And in times of duress, it's needed. You know, it is definitely needed. But at the same time, too much of a good thing will wear you out. And too much cortisol production will cause uh, adrenal depletion. It'll give us all sorts of negative emotions over a longer period of time and just wear out the whole body quicker. And so the more we can shift into that rest and digest side, the more the body will be allowed to heal. Besides that, what we see uh, is it has a in traditional Chinese medicine, there's a five element system uh, as well. And it's all again about balance and harmony. So the causes of dis disease, which is again, dis-ease, when we break it down. So internal causes and the seven emotions all affect the liver and the heart plus their organ. So anger causes the chi, that's the life force, to rise. And that's going to affect the liver. Joy slows the chi. And that's going to affect the heart. 
Worry not the chi, pancreas and lung. Shock scatters the chi, the chi, kidney and heart are affected. Pensiveness not the chi, the chi, and that's affecting the pancreas. Sadness and grief depletes the chi in the lungs. And fear descends the chi in the kidney. So when I first saw my uh, traditional Chinese medicine doctor, who was a naturopath and also an herbalist, uh, she started out um, basically as an acupuncturist and a massage therapist and just kept adding degrees. You know, one of the things when I saw her because of Lyme's disease, she made me recognize that while I was just blaming the spirochete that causes Lyme's disease and, you know, the uh, co-infections that come with it often, it wasn't just that. It was the fact that I was in a certain emotional state that was also depleting me. And so I was actually in sadness and grief and it was manifesting in my lungs at that time. And I didn't really understand that, but it was a relationship thing that had been going on for a long time. And that's how we look at things in a holistic point of view. In allopathic medicine, unfortunately, um, so often the doctors have quotas and they can only spend like 10 minutes with us. So they can't really get to know us. And they're just looking at us as organ systems, all these different organ systems that are interconnected, not really looking at the emotional component of it, unfortunately. Although again, there are many, many doctors that are becoming exceptions to the rule and are integrating in a holistic point of view and practice. And when we look over here, we see diseases, diseases your emotions are connected to. Things like repressed anger, and then we see tension, headaches, migraines, chronic back pain, fibromyalgia, anxiety, resentment, and anger. You know, all these things are related. So in anxiety, irritable bowel syndrome, mitral valve prolapse, heart palpitations, resentment, autoimmune disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis, anger, high blood pressure, and heart disease. It's in it's very, very well recognized that emotions affect our physical health. And here again, we see the same thing being, being said. So we don't really take stock in the West of just how much our emotional state is affecting our human body, unfortunately. No, we don't. And they teach us also in the West that um, everything in our bodies is more of a chemical reaction when in reality, uh, it's a, like an electrical reaction. It's just simply too fast of a reaction to make any sense of um, using the chemical analysis. So when we work on people and people have all of these angsts and they're all upset and their insides are tied up, what we're able to do is actually diffuse or take apart and remove that um, that trauma or that block allowing these signals to move back and forth so you get the appropriate information so you can start making better decisions for yourself because most people you know in this world are kind of blocked up and they have many blocks and it, it's true you can open up the energy body remove these blocks so information flows freely and sometimes people actually have like a cleansing crisis when this happens so it's it's a wonderful blessing in these times and i've said before science and spirituality will at some point come together and we have machines that could actually show us what our energy body looks like as you're looking at over here we have kirillin photography and um i have a friend that actually has one of these and she's a, a energy worker as well <clears throat> and she'll show people how you know, it will change. She could bring up different emotions in them and they could watch the colors change. As you see some representations of anger, fear, disgust, happiness, sadness, some surprise, neutrality, anxiety, love, depression, contempt, pride, shame, and envy. Um, so when people say, what does my aura look like? Well, it's constantly changing, constantly. It depends on the emotions that you're holding. And then again, we could look to the teachings of Christ where he talks about sin and he says, if you but thought about it, boom, it's already there. Thoughts are super powerful. You know, thoughts are reality. So as we think, 
so we are. So it's so, so important to control our emotions, to be able to control, to ground. There's so many important tools that we could do in yoga, which when we get done with this video, we're going to do some qigong and we're going to do some yoga and then get back to work uh, helping other people. You have to make the time for it, especially in these times. And it could be things also like Tai Chi as well and, and meditation. As Tai Chi and Qigong, they're truly, in many cases, just moving meditation. Uh, tai Chi for sure, although it does have a martial aspect to it, as well as, you know, so martial in the sense of a self-defense aspect to it, where Qigong is all about cultivating the life force and keeping it flowing. So there's some links here to some articles um, that could help you understand how emotions and organs are connected in traditional Chinese medicine. Most definitely. Because, you know, so often, I can't tell you how many times I run into people that have been in a relationship where they can't speak their mind. And they develop thyroid diseases, goiters, Hashimoto's, things like that. It's just, it goes together. And people, again, uh, that are having heart palpitations and such because of anxiety. In traditional Chinese medicine, emotions and physical health are intimately connected. This integrated mind-body approach to health and healing operates in a dynamic loop where emotions impact the health of the body and vice versa. For example, according to TCM theory, excessive irritability and anger can affect the liver and result in multiple ailments, including menstrual pain, headaches, redness of the face and eyes, dizziness, and dry mouth. Alternatively, imbalance in the liver can result in stormy moods. Diagnosis in traditional Chinese medicine is highly individualized. Once an impaired organ system and or emotional imbalance is identified, the unique symptoms of the patient determine the practitioner's treatment approach. So it isn't a one-size-fits-all by any means. And that's a beautiful thing, you know, looking at a person holistically. So traditional Chinese medicine has been practiced for over 2,000 years. Um, you could probably extend that out quite a bit. And its use in the United States as part of a complementary health care has grown dramatically over the last few decades. In fact, from 2002 to 2007, there was a 50% increase in acupuncture use from around 8 million to over 14 million people accessing this treatment. It's based on the principle that mental and physical well-being are intricately entwined. In turn, practitioners believe that optimal health is governed by balancing a person's qi, the vital life force with the complementary forces of yin, passive, and yang, active, and the five elements of fire, water, earth, wood, and metal. And in tra traditional Chinese medicine, it's believed that emotional imbalances can act as both symptoms and causes for physical issues. Additionally, mental health conditions are linked to specific physical elements of key organs. So according to traditional Chinese medicine, emotions are narrowed down into five basic feelings that are each associated with a corresponding element and organ in the body. Anger with the liver, fear with the kidneys, joy with the heart, sadness and grief with the lung, and worry with the spleen. For example, under TCM theory, breast distension, menstrual pain, and irritability during menses are treated with certain herbs and acupuncture points that target the liver. Headaches, dizziness, excessive anger, and redness of the face point to an alternative type of liver pattern are untreated in a different way. So it's, it's all interrelated, and we store our emotions in certain areas as well. And I've talked about that before, that there are 12 primary meridians which feed all the main organ centers. This is like the energetic equivalent of a vascular network. And there are what are called Lao channels that can actually develop off of these primary meridians where we actually physically, at a physical location, store the emotion. And thus we'll end up having certain pains and certain, um, well, certain dis-ease, again, manifest itself. Yeah, and you know, just over the last year, they've done a lot of tests with our aura or energy field, and they've realized that it's actually gotten thicker and they did make some different tuning forks for that because one of the things that you want to do with energy work is you want to balance the balance the energy body sound balancing is very very important when you have a trauma or an emotional issue 
that goes in your energy field as like a block or a crack and it's really important that the information coming in is is not blocked so you want to balance all of that out so sound balancing is very important so what does the liver have to do with migraines or pms organ systems and tcm may include the western medical physiological functions but they're also part of an integrated holistic body system so the entire mind and body may be evaluated and treated to improve a specific health concern the liver, for example, ensures that energy and blood flow smoothly throughout the body. It also regulates bile secretion, stores blood, and is connected with the tendons, the nails, and the eyes. By understanding these connections, TCM practitioners explain how an eye disorder, such as conjunctivitis, might be due to an imbalance of the liver. It's all about balance. Emotional and physical balance, they're so interconnected. Or excess menstrual flow may be due to a dysfunction in the liver's blood storing ability. On the emotional side, the liver is connected to anger, which when out of balance can be expressed in the extremes of excess wrath and irritation. Or as a lack of feeling, as in depression or PTSD, of which so many people have PTSD of one sort or another, unfortunately. These mental health imbalances can be both symptoms and or contributing causes of liver dysfunction. When ailments occur, TCM practitioners seek to untangle the mind and body imbalances that contribute to a person's physical and mental health conditions. Using a variety of treatments, including acupuncture, herbal medicines, moxibustion, cupping, and tuina massage. And so I've been a massage practitioner uh, as well as have done a lot of cupping and we use cupping so cupping all the time. Uh, it most definitely helps with the fascia. And so again, we have to look at people in a holistic manner to really understand and get to the core of this. Also, where we are going is a more energetic place. We are actually raising upwards in vibrations. So our emotions will even affect us at a higher degree as we keep going through the ascension process. Now, when it talks about acupuncture, one of the teachers that I had said at, at one point he realized that he was using the needles as a crutch and then he just shifted to basically sending energy through his fingers and his hands um, and again everybody is unique and everybody goes through their own process of understanding and uncovering themselves and their own strong points as well as weak points so in addition to emotions, TCM philosophy believes that other elements such as dietary, environmental, lifestyle, and hereditary factors also contribute to the development of imbalances in the body's ability to heal itself. Understanding the interplay of each of the five organ-emotion pairings is key to unlocking the healing potential of TCM. Below we summarize traditional Chinese medicine's belief on how the connections and imbalances between the organs and the emotions contribute to basic mental and physical health concerns. So the spleen plays an important part in the body's immune system and acts as a blood filter, removing old blood cells, bacteria, and impurities from the body. In TCM, the spleen is linked to the following emotions and ailments. As far as emotions, excessive mental work, such as worry, dwelling, or focusing too much on a particular topic, spleen function, food digestion, nutrient absorption, helping in the formation of blood and energy, keeping the blood and the blood vessels connected with the muscles, mouth, and lips, also involved in thinking, studying, and memory, symptoms of spleen imbalance, tiredness, loss of appetite, mucus discharge, poor digestion, abdominal distension, loose stools, diarrhea, weak muscles, pale lips, bruising, excess menstrual blood flow, and other bleeding disorders. Spleen conditions, spleen qi deficiency, spleen qi descending, spleen yang deficiency. And then with the lung, the lungs bring oxygen into the body and remove carbon dioxide and TCM. This organ is believed to be connected to grief in the following conditions. Emotions, grief, sadness, and detachment. Lung function, respiration brings energy from the air and helps to distribute it throughout the body. They work with the kidney to regulate water metabolism, and they're important in the immune system and for resistance to viruses and bacteria. 
regulate sweat glands and body hair, and provide moisture to the skin. Symptoms of lung imbalance, shortness of breath, shallow breathing, sweating, fatigue, cough, frequent cold and flu, allergies, asthma, and other lung conditions, dry skin, depression, and excessive crying. Lung conditions, lung chi deficiency, lung yin deficiency, and cold, damp, obstructing the lungs. Um, and then that you could really get into what type of climate would be good for each person too, depending on their constitution. Again, it's all about harmony and balance. The liver, digestion, and the processing of the nutrients, which are primary functions in this vital organ. And TCM, the liver associated with anger, depression, and the below physical symptoms. Emotions, anger, resentment, frustration, irritability, bitterness, and flying off the handle. Liver function involved in the smooth flow of energy and blood throughout the body, regulates bile secretion and blood sto- and stores blood, is connected with the tendons and nails in the eyes. Symptoms of liver imbalance, breast distension, menstrual pain, headache, irritability, inappropriate anger, dizziness, dry red eyes, and other eye conditions, and tendonitis. Liver conditions, liver chi, stagnation, and liver fire. And when we're doing... Um, energy work, uh, and even distance energy work, uh, I will simply basically use my own body uh, to send energy into it while thinking of the person that we're working on. So I'll be sending energy into the liver meridian when working on the liver, into the spleen meridian when working on the spleen, and etc. Yeah, and I think what makes our work a little bit different is Micah is really strong in manipulating energy and when I use the tuning forks I'm balancing out that energy while he's telling that energy to find its place find its um uh, well where where it needs needs to go and while we work on someone we ask them to uh, find a very healthy and happy picture of themselves put that in their mind because that's what we're going to do all the programming we're going to program your body to head back to that to that place So looking at the heart, the heart pumps blood throughout the body and TCM, the organ is linked to joy, but the imbalance of joy is expressed as either too much, agitation and restlessness, or too little, depression. Below are the mental and physical ailments linked with the heart. So emotions, lack of enthusiasm and vitality, mental restlessness, depression, insomnia, and despair. Heart function regulates the blood circulation, blood vessels responsible for even and regular pulse and influences vitality and spirit, connected with the tongue, complexion, and arteries. Symptoms of heart imbalance, insomnia, heart palpitations, irregular heartbeat, excessive dreaming, poor long-term memory, and psychological disorders. Heart conditions, heart yin, and heart fire. And then looking at the kidneys, they remove waste and excess fluid to make urine. In TCM, the kidney is related to fear, which can manifest as chronic fear or anxiety when the chi is out of balance, as well as result in, as far as emotions, fear, fearful, weak willpower, insecure, aloof, and isolated. Kidney function, key organ for sustaining life, responsible for reproduction, growth and development and maturation, involved with the lungs and water metabolism and respiration connected with the bones, teeth, ears, and head hair. Symptoms of kidney imbalance, frequent urination, urinary incontinence, night sweats, dry mouth, poor short-term memory, low back pain, ringing in the ears, hearing loss and other ear conditions, premature gray hair, hair loss, and osteoporosis. And kidney conditions, kidney yin deficiency and kidney, kidney yang deficiency. So in, in Taoist uh, thought, the original Jing, the original Qi, the essence, the more physical essence that we get from our parents at conception is stored in the kidneys. And of that, there's only so much. And so when you're worrying and when you have fear in excess, you're burning that off. Now, you know, this is also why Qigong is such an amazing practice, because we can augment uh, the inflow of the life force into our bodies consciously through certain meditative practices. And it's extremely powerful. And so our Wei Qi field, Wei means external, it basically is like our, we could relate it to the Earth's magnetosphere. And we can consciously build and augment that, especially through the practice of Qigong and in, in more specific, uh, specificity 
Zhang Zhuang, which is basically standing still and accumulating the, the life force. One of those postures is embracing the tree, and I've talked about that before, and have done some videos on that. Um, amazing practice. It can totally transform your life. So I have some other links here which get into some more depth. Um, as far as, you know, looking into the emotional aspects and as we see here, all disease comes from the heart, the pivotal role of emotions in classical Chinese medicine. And I think it would behoove people to take a look into it. And anybody that's interested in, you know, having a session with Cindy and I, just reach out to us. We, we love to help people. We love to teach people to help themselves as well, because ultimately that's that's really where it's at. Yeah, that's the most important thing is that you be able to take control of your own healing and figure out what's best for you. And that's one of the things that we've been able to do is, um, you know, as we work on people, it becomes more and more clear to them the next steps that they need to do to bring themselves to a more perfect place. So this is a beautiful saying, um, and you see, cultivate peace first in the garden of your heart by removing the weeds of lust hatred, greed, selfishness, and jealousy. Then only you can manifest it externally. Then only those who come in contact with you will be benefited by your vibrations of peace and harmony. And so again, you know, emotions will affect our physical body. And then, of course, when the physical body is in a lot of pain and in a lot of dis-ease, that affects our emotions and it becomes this negative loop. So we have to cultivate peace first cultivate love and compassion and that will start to actually heal our body yeah it's a beautiful thing and you know it's been a, a really well-kept secret when it comes to people being able to heal themselves they don't want us to know that but there are ways that we can take control of this and help ourselves as always guys i want to thank you for your support on ko-fi and patreon we couldn't do it without you much love, much peace to all. God bless and namaste. Namaste.